FLM, wide open thinking, world-class work, and far-reaching results. Now with locations in Minneapolis, Columbus, Indianapolis, and Washington, D.C. A strategic marketing and communications company dedicated to serving clients who specialize in the business of agriculture and the life of rural communities. Well, thank you for joining us for our AgriPulse Washington Week interview. I'm Spencer Chase, joined as always by AgriPulse Senior Editor Phil Brasher, discussing the week that was, agriculturally speaking, in Washington, D.C. And the big news in Washington, not just in agricultural policy, but really in, in, as a whole, is the omnibus spending bill. Uh, the deadline for government funding was set to expire uh, today. Uh, we're filming this on Friday, uh, Friday the 11th. And the original deadline for, uh, government, uh, for a government shutdown was today. They were able to pass a short-term extension that moves that deadline back to next Wednesday and now Phil you were just telling me the latest that you've heard is that we can expect to see an omnibus bill at some point on Monday. Right to the chairman of the House Appropriations Committee said he expects to, uh, to file this massive bill on Monday and uh, believe me everyone in this town is going to be uh, pouring through the, the details of it. Uh, and everyone in this town certainly includes uh, us at AgriPulse as well because there's a lot of things that are going to be attached to this omnibus spending bill as policy riders and a lot of those policy riders very important to agriculture and so we're going to break a few of those down for you here and the first one we want to talk about is a biotech labeling issue that has been uh, in the works for for some time really mm -hmm. uh, in in the summer the house passed a, a bill that would preempt state gmo labeling laws create some create some government language for for the such and so the senate was we were waiting on senate action on something of that nature and uh, it was said a, a little while ago that uh, a, a fuller more robust bill might not be discussed might not be acted upon until january but there still might be something that makes its way into the omnibus on, on biotech labeling? Uh, it's a long shot. It looks the, like very much to be a long shot, but uh, wouldn't entirely rule it out. Here's the situation. Vermont has a, a labeling law that's set to take effect in July, and the, uh, the food industry is really desperate to get something done before then. And they're already saying that uh, companies are having to gear up, having to figure out whether they have to reformulate products, do they have to label, what do they have to do? And of course, other legislatures will be most likely taking this up as uh, this issue up as well. So they very much want to get something done now in this bill. And so, I mean, with, with that in mind, I mean, the chances that something like that were to actually happen, I mean, there's a lot of internal politics going on over on the Senate side, you know, a lot of players involved. And uh, De Debbie Stabenow, the ranking member of the Senate Agriculture Committee, has said that this is something she wants to accomplish, but something that might have to wait until January before it really gets addressed. So who are, who are really the big players here, Phil? Well, I think the, the most important player, or well, two, two players, one of them is uh, Senator Stabenow, mm -hmm. the uh, ranking Democrat on the Senate Agriculture Committee. She's been leading the negotiations among Democrats on trying to get a, uh, to the broader, broader bill established. When it became apparent that wasn't going to happen, the industry now has been pushing very, very hard for a two-year preemption. That would take us past the presidential election uh, in 2017 as a to, to stop Vermont stop any other state laws from taking effect while they try to negotiate try to work out a uh, a, uh, a much broader bill that would set national standards and so forth the problem uh, that they've run into is a senator from Oregon Jeff Merkley he is uh, he is the top Democrat on the Senate agriculture appropriations subcommittee this is a very powerful panel that controls the purse strings for the Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration, the two agencies uh, that uh, deal with uh, agricultural biotechnology primarily. So he has said, and he told us earlier this week that he had communicated to the Senate leadership that he would not accept even a temporary uh, preemption of, of state laws. And so we're, here we are. The industry is still struggling. They're trying to get Democratic support. They went to Colin Peterson, who's the uh, senior Democrat on the House Agriculture Committee, ask him to try to get involved in the Senate to bring some pressure over there. Uh, they have to come up with uh, some way to break, uh, break, break the logjam over in the Senate and get, uh, if nothing else, a majority leader, Harry Reid, to, to uh, somehow let this go through. That's 
really the only hope they have at this point. The time, the clock is really running, uh, very close to running out. So very fluid situation in the Senate on biotech labeling. Also, I want to briefly talk about some other uh, matters. Mm -hmm. First one being country of origin labeling. As, as some of you are, are I'm sure, know, uh, the World Trade Organization earlier this month issued the amount of money that Canada and Mexico are authorized to retaliate against the United mm. States stemming from the country mm -hmm. of origin labeling dispute. That number comes in uh, just a touch above a billion dollars combined retaliation from Canada and Mexico. And Phil, seeing some action in regards to potential repeal of the provision which would block this potential retaliation from Canada and Mexico, which they could be authorized to implement as early as the end of next week. So where do things stand in regards to a potential right. repeal of country of origin labeling? Well, it looks uh, almost certain that there will be some repeal language in this big bill that we expect to see on Monday. Uh, there's still some question, even as of today, about how far it will go. Uh, at the very least, we believe it will uh, repeal country of origin labeling as it relates to muscle cuts of beef and pork. Those are the, the main issues in the WTO case that, uh, in which the WTO found that the United States was uh, in violation of uh, international rules. Uh, it could go, the industry would obviously like to uh, go beyond that and, and get to ground meat and uh, even uh, chicken, uh, which was not a part of the WTO case. So we'll see. That is one of those issues that's really being negotiated down to the wire. So something, something regarding cool repeal is expected in the omnibus. It's just a matter of what it is. Right. And both. Yeah. Both uh, Pat Roberts, who's chairman of Senate Agriculture, and, and Debbie Stabenow, who's the the top Democrat, have both told us that they expect uh, repeal language to be in the uh, legislation. And if you remember, the World Tour Organization dispute that was brought by Canada and Mexico dealt with the muscle cuts of beef and pork, but then the House repealed the cooler repeal bill that passed yeah. in June. Right. Uh, that addressed uh, really all meat varieties for beef, chicken, and pork. So the House bill went a little further than the WTO action, and so there's discussion about whether or not the uh, Senate repeal will also right. match the House's repeal efforts. We'll be sure to keep you up to date on that. Yeah. Phil, also want to talk to you about uh, an issue that I'm sure you're all very familiar with, uh, Waters of the U.S. It's something that uh, our, our frequent readers and viewers are no stranger to. It's been something that's been discussed to a great d deal. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been long thought that a potential avenue for WOTUS action was going to be this omnibus spending bill. So where do we see things right now in regards to an omnibus, uh, potential omnibus uh, WOTUS repeal, excuse me, in the omnibus? Right. Well, Republicans have really been working, not, not so much repeal, what they've been trying to get is a, a provision in in the final bill that would prevent the administration from actually enforcing this new rule through the rest of this fiscal year. And once you get something like that into a spending bill like this, it's much easier to continue it uh, beyond that and would probably be easy, relatively easy for them to continue it into the new administration. The problem is the, uh, the White House has been very resistant to, to giving this up. Um, no one has uh, expressed any confidence uh, to, to me that uh, that they would that it's going to be in the final bill. It's certainly a top priority for Republicans. Uh, they insist. I was uh, just talking momentarily a few minutes ago with the chairman of the House Natural Resources Committee, uh, Rob Bishop. He said that um, it's actually something that they could probably live without because we now have a court stay on the. Uh, on the uh, implementation of the rule, of course, that could be lifted, but uh, mm -hmm. for for the time being, the courts have uh, of courts have blocked that. Just a laundry list of agricultural organizations that are fighting against WOTUS. There's a lot of lawmakers that are not necessarily a fan either. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether or not this is addressed in the omnibus, it'll probably continue to be a point of contention for oh, for, for can quite be sure. some time. <laughs> you can <laughs> either, be sure of that. Either through the legislative or legal process, some branch right. of government is going to be dealing with WOTUS for, for quite yeah. a while here. Yeah. And Phil, also just briefly as we wrap things up here, want to touch base a little bit about something that's very important to a lot of agricultural stakeholders in the country, and that's the tax extenders legislation, something that would include things that, to the nature of Section 179, uh, bonus depreciation, a biodiesel tax credit, uh, wind energy, a lot of things tied into that tax extenders bill. Uh, some discussion on that right now. Looks like we're going to see action of some sort on tax extenders by the end of the year. What will that action be? Well, one of two things are going to happen. The Republicans have been trying to negotiate a very big tax package. It would do 
a couple of big things. It would make the Section 179 expensing allowance permanent. It would also make a, 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 an expense, uh, the uh, research and development tax credit uh, permanent. Uh, could potentially uh, reform the biodiesel uh, tax credit as well. Democrats are pushing for a, for a number of things uh, that they would like to have in that bill. And even wrapped into this whole negotiation is uh, lifting the uh, oil export ban. The fallback plan uh, is uh, a simple two-year extension, or actually uh, for the rest of uh, this year and on through 2016, of all of the expired tax uh, incentives, and that would include the Section 179. So you, Section 179, when we're talking next week, could either be made permanent or it could be extended through 2016. It's a big difference, but we'll <laughs> right. stay tuned. Definitely a huge difference there. So as you can tell, next week is going to be a very big week in Washington. A lot of things up in the air. Uh, Phil and I were talking before we press record on this that uh, anything we say could be outdated within two hours. I mean, everything is a very fluid situation on Capitol Hill right now. A lot of new developments going on all the time. And the best place for your agricultural coverage on those new developments is, of course, agripulse.com. We'll be sure to keep you up to date on all the new developments uh, through these next couple of days as things really get intense with agricultural negotiations in that omnibus spending bill. For Phil Brasher, I'm Spencer Chase. Have a good one.